everybody, Keith Sarlos coming to you live and direct from the most beautiful place on the entire planet, Windmill Ranch on Ballard Canyon. Now, a long time ago, this used to be a Fuji apple farm, and we farmed them for a full year, worked very hard on it, and got our entire delivery turned away. We actually dumped them over in the field back there and let cattle eat them. And my mother, in a very brilliant, beautiful way, said, well, you should probably tear those out and plant grapes. It seems like people want those. And uh, 25 years later, here we are. Everything about this vineyard has been a struggle. Just by looking at it, you can see the, the drama through those hillsides. The hillside goes down, it comes back up. The little boy terrace is on the far. We have the high hill right behind me. We have a low valley. We have another crown that drops behind. This is like playing a miniature golf course. Everywhere you hit it, it's going to go somewhere you didn't expect. And farming it is an amazing challenge. But with amazing challenges come amazing rewards when you do it right. So let me tell you a little bit about this shipment. This shipment actually consists of six different wines. Three bottle shipment will be a luck of the draw coming in there. You will get a Syrah, you will get a Grenache, and you will get a Petit Verdot. If you're a six bottle level, you'll get two Syrahs, each one of the Grenaches, and two Petit Verdots. And if you're family, well, of course you're gonna get everything. But let me tell you a little bit about this shipment. This shipment is something we haven't done before. And it's really a study on one place. There's a lot of different ways to make wine. You can buy fruit from a lot of different people, make your wine and sell it. It's awesome, people do it every single day. But there's another layer to this, and that's an estate fruit. An estate fruit means you grew it on your property. You are telling a story about your vineyard this year and this year alone. Every year is gonna be different, but you are allowing it to be who it is and proudly display it. We are almost 100% estate. And I'm very, very proud of that fact because at the base of this, we are farmers that make wine. We're not winemakers that farm. So everything that's on this property has a bit of a cohesiveness. It is interesting to be able to share it with you where we have three different Syrahs, two different Grenaches and a Petit Verdot. And you can see the similarities. One of the things I would ask you to do if you're having a party, pull both of these Syrahs out, pop the corks, and taste them side by side. Because now I wanna tell you what makes it unique, what makes it special. And I'm gonna to try to explain a very different, difficult concept, which is terroir. And terroir means sense of place. Going back to the music analogy, if you're buying songs from all over the place and performing in them and you put them on your album, it's probably a great album. But when you wrote the songs, when you performed the songs, when you went through the heartbreak and the pain and the struggle, and it's it, it's coming from you. Someone else isn't singing your words. There comes with a different level of passion and a different level of commitment. And I think that's what we're expressing here. I'm also proud to say that these wines, my father started the harvest on these. Uh, he passed away in April and he began the year and I finished it alongside my family. So my dad still has a bit of action inside of these wines and I hope you care about that as much as I do. Let me tell you about your shipment. We're gonna start off with the Syrahs. There's three different Syrahs that are coming in this shipment. Now let me explain these wines. We have the Buckle, we have Glove, and we have Mitt. They come from three different parts of this vineyard. So when you look right behind me, it's what's called the High Hill. Uh, that is Glove, my work glove. That big terrace, the big drama, the, the Papa, that is Buckle. And then on the far side, there's a small terrace, which we call Little Boy, and that is Mitt. Each one of these vines that you see behind me are genetically identical. They're a clone of each other. The concept of understanding that even though we picked them on the same day, we made them the same way, bottled them the same way, and each of them have a different personality is terroir in a nutshell. That hillside tastes different than that hillside, which tastes different from this hillside and each one of them are being expressed through their own lens. That's why I chose my brother's mitt, my father's buckle, and my work gloves. My dad, my brother, and myself are fundamentally the same person. We have the same values, same thought processes. We were raised in the same home, 
by you know our father and our mother the dna is is very very similar but our environment created three very different people. Terroir is basically just that. When you think of your children, same house, same food, same family, same rules, same everything, would you ever expect those children to be the same? And the answer is of course not. They're gonna be unique, they're gonna be special, they're gonna be the best version of who they are. And that's what we're getting in these wines. I chose the mitt to honor my brother because my brother played baseball, played professionally for 10 years, now is the head coach of the Texas Christian University Horn Frogs. Go Frogs. And when I saw that glove, his old glove, the one that's worn and beaten and, and, and destroyed, that's how my brother got to the pros. That's how my brother got to where he is today, because of that stupid old glove. Because he wanted to pick it up and play with it and play with it and play with it and use it and use it and use it before, until it basically became a part of who he was. It was his tool. I didn't go that direction. My dad had two loves in life, and one was working and doing things like this, and the other was baseball. And with one son, he got baseball. And with he, me, he got work. So dovetailing into glove. Glove or my work glove. So I bought a pair of gloves, wrote my name across the knuckles so everybody knew they were mine. But I've used them almost every day. I love them. They give me a grip, they're strong. They, they have, they've gone from being this crunchy thing to conforming to my hand, just like my brother's mitt conformed to his. I am a different person than my brother, and we, because of our location to each other, have made each other better. We grew up with a lot of conflict. We, we didn't like losing to each other. We fought all the time, but that made us who we are. It made us competitive. It made us the kind of people that don't give up the people that want to go to the very end and want to win, because this is hard. This doesn't love me. This wants to grow in every single direction that it can, as wild as it possibly can, and I'm trying to give order to chaos so that we can pick it, create wine, and ship it to you. The final wine of those three is Buckle. And on the Buckle, uh, after my dad passed away, the Valley Penning Association the group my dad would ride with and competed with, uh, made a buckle in honor of my dad and threw an event and people won them. It was quite an honor. Naming it after that hill, my, I mean, how can you not love that hill? It's small, it's unique, it's not massive. It starts, you know, high and ends low and all the water drains in two different directions. It's, it's definitely the hardest place in our entire, my opinion, the entire valley to farm, but it makes amazing fruit because stress is one of the great givers to great wine. If it's easy to grow, it's gonna be flabby and soft. If it's hard to grow, it's gonna have structure and flavor and, a, and just a complete package as a wine. So if you have these three bottles, and we do have a couple of them left, Open them, drink them together, drink them with people and see those differences between those personalities. See the difference between a hillside like that, the one behind it and here. It's a personality coming through the exact same DNA. And I think it's absolutely a beautiful, beautiful expression of not only terroir, but our family as a whole. The next wine in this shipment is Grenache. And we have two different Grenaches. One is horseplay and the other is roughhouse. And on the front of these labels, you'll see probably the two cutest kids I've ever seen in my life. That would be my son, Cash, and my nephew, Brady. Cash and Brady don't have brothers. They are each other's brother. They just happen to be raised in different homes. Their personalities are different, but their values are the same. Their DNA is 50% the same, uh, with some added benefit of having my wife and my sister-in-law's DNA thrown into the mix to elevate it quite a bit. But in Grenache, what you have is that, you have that personality. Syrah is, you know, big, gray-haired, bearded man. To Grenache's youthful boy, the youthful exuberance of just honestly being young and excited and happy. And that's what Grenache is. Grenache is the most widely grown and most widely consumed wine on the planet. And if you haven't found Grenache, here's your opportunity to drink it and see what is so great about it. Horseplay comes from here right there. 
It comes from Windmill Ranch. It is the son, if you will, of the high hill. The glove, which is the high hill Syrah, touches the horseplay Grenache. They are grown literally side by side, the child of the parent. Grenache is an absolutely beautiful, luscious wine. And when I looked at those two, pers those two photos on the bottle, they just were perfect for what they are. I grew up in, like I said, a rough house. We, there was a lot of horseplay and there was a lot of rough housing. And when Cash and Brady see each other, they line up, they see who's taller, they go back to back, they do all the things that brothers would do. And they carry, care about each other the way brothers do. The rough house comes from El Camino Real. Same DNA, slightly different household. So that narrative of personality continues. We get to see the terroir of the horseplay to see, and you get to see the terroir of the Grenache at El Camino Real. And finally, my little sweetie, Lane Linda, the gunslinger. The gunslinger is the last grape that we have planted here on Windmill Ranch and it comes right on the sunny side, which means the first time in the morning when the sun comes up over that hill, it's the vines that get the first light. And it is a fabulous place to grow Petit Verdot. It wouldn't be a varietal that I would have planted when we planted this the first time because it's not really a varietal, a varietal that a lot of people know. And it's almost impossible to find a 100% Petit Verdot. So I love to think of this wine, this gunslinger, if you will, as a complete individual. And Lane Linda is absolutely that. She is a firecracker of a personality. Her per personality is 10 times bigger than she is. And that's kind of what Petit Verdot is. The clusters aren't huge. The clusters are regular size, but the flavor that comes out of it is expansive. And that's what this wine is. It's not overpowering. It's just big. And I drink Petit Verdot every chance I get. And sadly, I drink a lot of ours because it's impossible to find anywhere else. And that's what makes it special. That's what makes it unique. It isn't run of the mill. It isn't a grocery store wine. It's not something you're going to find commonplace. It is special. And a gunslinger like Lane Linda, someone with a massive personality that I absolutely love hanging out with because I think we get each other. Every time I go and see her, we go on an adventure. We go do something fun, just me and her. And last time Cash went along and the photo you see was just us bouncing around Denton, Texas one day, stopped in to see a friend. She put on a hat, I took a picture, I showed it to her. She goes, yeah, that's a label. And that was it. That's how this happened. It's absolutely a unique, special, one of a kind wine. This was a expression of one vineyard, one place, one time. And because of that, this little package, you get so much of who we are as a family. Our DNA is combined with these wines. You taste the differences, even though they're grown on the same place, by the same people, made the same way. Those unique individuals, those personalities, just like your kids, are coming screaming right out. I just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you. I work for you and everything that we do I don't work for a company, I don't work for corporations, I don't work for a distributor. Um, I was reminded of this th this week, I did a great podcast with Wine of the Month Club and I got to talk about what we do and how we do it and why we love it. And after that conversation, I got to think about where we are now. I got to have a great conversation with a friend and he said, well, you chose to do it the hardest way possible. And by doing it the hardest way possible, it has given us control and more than just control in a very turbulent last couple of years, I have, I have become moved to know that I make wine directly for you. People can't find these everywhere. We found each other. And the fact that I get to make these wines, not only for people I care about, but specifically for families, for unique individuals, for people like you, is probably the greatest gift I can imagine. So thank you. Thank you for supporting our family. Thank you for allowing us to do this again for you and stick with us through the rest of the year because every single wine club shipment is literally off the charts. And these are definitely the best wines we have ever made. So for Keith Sarlos and the entire Sarlos and Sons family, I'm gonna give you your moment of zen.
We live to honor those that have come before us and we prepare the way for those yet to be.